Hello, this is Mr. Beck. This is part two in my series on creating a game for Android. I call this Space Blaster. This is designed for my eighth grade Android programming class. In part one, we just downloaded the application from my GitHub account. My GitHub name is Android Teacher. We grabbed the Space Blaster application and we plugged some information into the target class and talked a little bit about what's here in this project. The target class just has position X, position Y, and rotation three float values, very simple. Well, instead of going through and typing all this as we go, I've plugged the information in. I just want to talk about what it is I'd like my students to do. We're going to draw targets at random locations. On the screen, we've been talking about arrays at this point. And now we're going to use them to uh, create, to draw some graphics. All right, so I have two different arrays here. You can see them on line 31. Uh, you'll need to create. Uh, the first is an array of matrices. It's, I'm calling it position 1. And it's uh, an array that's got five positions, 0 through 4. And uh, the, the matrix class holds information that we can use when drawing graphics. It holds information like rotation, you know, x and y position. So we can pass a position object uh, within a, our draw method, and uh, it will know, you know where to put the graphic and how to rotate it. I've also created an array of uh, targets here, and that also is five in length, zero through four. And we're gonna keep these two sort of associated. You know, Every time um, we're dealing with target at array position zero, we will also be dealing with the position object at array position zero. And that way, um, they will always sort of be, they'll always work together like that, okay. So once you've declared those two arrays, let's come down to our panel class, our constructor here. And you know, in the simple bitmap tutorial, the one where we learn to set up this spaceship and work with the buttons, we get the dimension of the screen within the on draw method using the canvas. Well, we need the height and the width of the screen before on draw is ever executed. And I, I looked that up, uh, I just Googled, you know, how can I get the height and width of an Android device before onDraw is called? And Stack Overflow gave me these six lines here using the Window Manager class. And you'll need to get these into your constructor method. You might want to pause the screen, get these in. Um, it returns a width and a height of the screen here, right at the very beginning. We're going to use this to create random values. We're going to create a random number between 0 and the width of the screen. And we're going to use that as the x location for one of our graphics. And we're going to generate a random number between 0 and the height of the screen. And we'll use that as the y position for our graphics as well. We'll be doing that uh, five times for each graphic. So every graphic will have a random x and y coordinate. But we need that for our maximum value. So uh, at the top of your constructor method, we'll determine width and height of the screen. Then we're going to come down and we're going to initialize our two arrays. The first array we're going to initialize is our position one array, and it's pretty simple. We just loop through the array and uh, create a new matrix, simple. But as we initialize the target array, slightly more going on here. We're going to, you know, initialize it by with the new target class here. We're going to create a new random object, and I, I put it here just for demonstration purposes. It's easier just to have it here as I talk about it. Um, an instance of the random class, and we're going to call random rand.nextint, which is something we've used a lot in my class, everybody should be familiar with. Uh, we're going to pass it width and height here. The width is the maximum value that can be generated for this random value, okay? And we're going to cast that to a float because the position information in our target, right, is a float. And we're going to load it into position x. So the first time through our loop at array position 0, our target will receive a position X that's randomly generated between zero and the width of the screen. Same thing for our uh, position Y. So inside our constructor method, we're gonna need to initialize our position one array, as well as our target array. We're gonna need to load our target array with random values for X and Y. We won't be uh, loading a random value for rotation. That's zero, and we're gonna keep it that way. Okay, so, Let's go down here and, okay, so here's our um, onDraw method. 
And inside of onDraw method, I'm encapsulating a bunch of logic inside of a method called update. All right, inside of update here, which is called every time the screen is refreshed, we're now going to load our position matrix array with uh, the random values that, are, that have been loaded into our target. All right, so down here, and once again, you know, in the YouTube comments, if you've got a better way to do this, or we can think of a, I'm, I'm always interested in ways to streamline these types of things. Um, this is just how, I guess, I decided to do it. I've created a local matrix here called target matrix. This is inside of update now. And I'm going to loop through that target matrix, and I'm going to initialize it. All right. Now, in the code that I have on GitHub right now, I've got post rotate before post translate. You probably want to take, you definitely want to take post rotate and put it after post translate because if at any point you want to give your target a steady rotation value, you're going to get strange results if you rotate it before you translate it. Because what it'll do is it will, if you rotate before translate, it'll, it'll, it'll calculate the width and the height of the, It'll determine a point at which it should rotate the graphic around and then translate it away and then rotate around that point so you'll get your target rotating in very wide circles. Okay, um, But if you translate first and then calculate the position at which it should rotate around, it'll rotate, and it'll rotate around itself. So anyway, translate before rotate. Um, I'm taking my local target matrix okay, and I'm loading it with the position X and position Y from our target class. All right, so the target matrix at position zero gets the position X and position Y from the target at position zero. Same thing for rotate, but it's always gonna be zero for rotate because there's no random number. Now the last point here, we take position one, which is our global matrix, and we're gonna set it to, have, to contain all of the values within this local target matrix. So now we will have five position one objects, each one with a random position X and a position Y ready to go. All right, so make sure we have this loop built in. And then we come up to on draw here, and we're just going to create a loop inside of on draw that draws this. Now I'm drawing my ammo pick for the target because I haven't created a new target graphic. I'll, I'll cover that briefly here in a second. But we're just going to loop through each object within our position array. We're going to draw a bitmap. We're going to draw the ammo pick at the position that's been loaded. So we'll have uh, five different targets at five different positions on the screen. And it works. If you run it right here, you'll load it up, and you'll see that you'll have uh, targets that are drawn randomly every time you start the application. In the next video, we'll go through and we will determine collision. That's, that's part three. If you want to um, load a new graphic, it's a pretty simple concept right underneath where we declare the class. Declare a new bitmap, call it something like target pick, you know. And uh, down here inside of our constructor method, all right, we simply load that with a picture from our drawable folder, just like this. We say target pick equals bitmap factory dot decode resource, you know. And uh, it will load a resource from, and everyone in my class should be familiar with this, the drawable HDPI folder, as we're working with it. Um, if we threw a graphic in there called target.png, uh, we would be all set to go. We just have to change out uh, any, anywhere we need to swap out ammo pick for target pick. We could do that. All right, so if you run this, you'll see the, uh, ammu the targets excuse me, appear randomly on the screen. Uh, we don't have any interaction with those targets, but uh, we'll be setting that up in part three uh, where we work with collision detection. So if you have any problems in class, please let me know. This is for a grade. Uh, this will be for a grade. All students in my class will need to demonstrate that they are able to uh, render five random targets to the screen. So thank you for watching. In part three, once again, we will work with collision detection.